doesn't do to parlay on an empty stomach, you know. Makes one's words frivolous when they should be grave. Plenty to digest. After all, a good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savored so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Alminster. Right. Um, you see, I, um, well, that is to say, Gail, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can, forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you are hers. The long-awaited question. Now, if you please, Elminster, for the too long-awaited answer. You know where you went wrong, Gail. And I trust you told your fellow traveler here the nature of your ills. I can't say that so far I've volunteered uh, the entire truth. Do you mean to say? You've never bothered to disclose how dangerous you are. Not in so many words. No. Then you two have much to discuss after I'll have taken my leave. In short, Gail, through his own doing, has become a living explosive that could wipe from this world this very gathering and, and much more besides for his folly mistra forsook him but now she has decreed he is to be given a chance of redemption mistra would consider forgiveness she would mistra is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both she knows of your strife with the absolute, that most insidious of evils. By circumstance, but not by purpose, I swear. I never intended you any harm. His acts were misguided, yes, but I assure you that deep down he has a heart of, well, let's say, at least silver which is more that can be said for the foe you face. You must know that the absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gail, with its destruction. It is Mistress' belief that only you can. The orb. Precisely. That which renders him so dangerous is an orb of Netherese origin that is buried within his chest. And that, Gail, is how we arrive at the heart of my directive. Mistra has granted me the power to stop the clock, as it were. Interesting. This could be help, or hindrance. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the um, catalyst that will burn it from this world. No, indeed. But I think she trusts me too. It brings me no pleasure saying this. With that, I've said my sorry piece. A 
need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. My nahastra mistrarium Italian thras anas It is done. Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gael himself. I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. On my honor, I'm not sure yet I can say the same. Like moons make swell and wane, and yet a notion born in lonely hours. Come, ebb, come, flow. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. with Elminster is never less than memorable. I suppose it's time we dealt with the Hollyphant in the room. You have questions for me, and I promise I have answers. Not at all. Just some gallows humor for you. I assure you, you were never in any danger. Let me explain. I'm what one might call a wizard prodigy. Who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it. Much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself. The lady of mysteries. The goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time, she became my muse, and later even my lover. A mortal, enchanted by the allures of the divine, we enjoyed each other's company, body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. I sought to cross her boundaries. Quiet. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. I swore my ambition was only to serve her better. But she only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Suffice it to say, I obtained an obscure and ancient book that had locked away inside a much coveted prize. It was a fragment of primal weave locked out of time. What if, I thought, what if? After all this time, I could return. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domain. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next, here, place your hand and you feel the tadpole quiver into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes. Inside, there are no pages. Its teeth, its claws. It's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. Terrifying, isn't it? This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. 
And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. Rather worse, actually. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry. It'd level a city the size of Waterdeep. Fortunately, this need no longer be a concern. Not until I meet the heart of the Absolute, whatever that is. want to begrudge someone their secrets, but that's something I should know. Very serious of you, but go ahead. Even if I could remember, I'm not sure I'd tell you. I don't want your ego to get overinflated. Can you feel it? The shadows gnaw at us. Do not take them for granted. Ah, <sighs> oh, 
Are you the true soul? Yes. Listen up. Grab a torch, stay out of the dark, and move fast. The shadows have eyes. Go on.